Okay. Today we will talk about this uh, demand supply analysis and part of the impact of tax and subsidy in case of a perfectly competitive market. So first we talk about an impact of uh, excise tax or unit tax. Unit tax means a tax of any amount T here. Uh, it will be imposed on a quantity of mute karo. So tax will be imposed on the quantity say T amount of tax per unit of output. So what will happen say if tax is imposed say this is the supply curve before imposition of tax then say for to produce or to sell this q0 amount of output the sellers earlier required this amount of price which is the minimum x price or minimum acceptable price so unless until they get this price, they will not sell the output. So after tax, if tax is on uh, the quantity of output, so if the amount of tax is say T rupees, then to produce Q0 amount of output and sell it in the market, uh, the new post tax price will be the initial price plus the tax amount. So if this is the, this distance is the T, so the new price will be this amount. Similarly, if the producer wants to sell Q1 amount of output earlier, he needs this much price. Now he needs this price plus T. So if you join a straight line like this. So the new supply curve after tax will be a leftward shift like this. Okay. Now come back to this. Uh, before any tax, imposition of tax, market equilibrium is at E0, which is at intersection of the demand curve and the supply curve. So here, this is the initial demand curve, DD, and this is the initial demand curve, DD, and this is the initial supply curve, SS. So the market equilibrium is at E0. So this is the initial equilibrium before taxation. So equilibrium price is uh, this P0, pointing to this E0 point, and Q0 is the equilibrium quantity of output. Now at point E0, what will the value of consumer surplus? How much? So this is the price P0 before tax. So consumer surplus will be the area under the demand curve, this area under the demand curve and above the price line. So the consumer surplus before tax will be area of this area. Area of this rectangle not rectangle, triangle. So it will be equal to the area 1, 2, plus 3, plus 4. Is this clear? Yes, sir. So, so before taxation, the area of, uh, sorry, the consumer surplus will be this red triangle 
So it will be equal to the area 1, area 2, plus area 3, plus area 4. Fine. Now what will be the producer surplus? Producer surplus, producers are also getting this P0 price. So producer surplus will be the area above the supply line, supply curve, this line below this price line. So the producer surplus will be this triangle, area of this triangle. This triangle. Fine. So it will be equal to 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. Okay. Hello. Okay, sir. So now, if we talk about the social surplus or total surplus, surplus, that means consumer surplus plus producer surplus. So it will be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. Okay. So as you can see, the, the total surplus will be 1. So social total surplus of social surplus equal to consumer surplus plus producer surplus, which will be equal to 1, 2, 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6, plus 7, plus 8. So perfectly competitive market is an efficient market as the total social surplus uh, is maximum in this market system. Now, if the government imposes rupees T tax per unit of output, that means if you want to purchase 10 kg of uh, some commodity and uh, amount of tax is say 10 rupees per unit, then you have to pay 10 times 10. That means 100 rupees is the tax. So tax creates a gap between the demands, the between the buyer's price, PD, and the seller's price, PS. So if you look at this diagram, set so post tax, say if we take output equal to say this Q2. So for this output, so this amount will be the demanders price and this amount will be the seller's price. And this gap, the distance between the two is the tax amount. So post tax, uh, after the tax, supply card sips up by the distance SS to S1, S1. As I have already said, that this supply card sips upward like this, S1, S1, by the amount of the tax. So post tax, the buyer's price equal to the sell, seller's price plus the tax amount. So after tax, the new equilibrium will be that the new intersection between uh, the new supply curve and the original demand curve. So new equilibrium is taking place at point E1. So here, the market price will be P1 now. And now amount of output produced and sold in the market is Q1 amount of output as this E1 is the equilibrium. So now, what will be the amount, or we can see uh, from this, the equilibrium price is P1 and equilibrium output is Q1. So imposition of unit tax reduces equilibrium output from Q0 to Q1. 
so due to imposition of tax amount of output decreases and the price paid by the buyers increases from p0 to p1 and now at this equilibrium amount of output is produced is q1 now at this output to produce this output what the sellers are getting sellers are getting this price this distance so call this price this point call it p2 so p2 price is the price uh, obtained by the sellers okay. and the buyer's price is p1 so compared to the pre tax position uh, price paid by the buyers increased and price received by the sellers decreased and the amount of output produced and sold in the market is also decreased now we are, we will see how the social welfare changes after the imposition of tax now look uh, what will the value of consumer surplus and producer surplus after tax so after tax now the price paid by the buyers is p1 this price so now the producer consumer surplus is this amount this triangle or triangle one clear bujhache yes sir so producer surplus is this triangle one now what about the consumer uh, sorry producer surplus so this is one is consumer surplus so what is producer surplus now producers are not getting p1 price how much they are getting they are getting this p2 price this price so producer surplus will be the area above this supply curve and below the price line so now the producer surplus is this triangle or the triangle 8 so one is consumer surplus eight is producer surplus after tax okay so so consumer surplus is 1 producer surplus is 8 now what about this area so this distance this from this e1 to this point so this distance is nothing but your tax amount this tax so government is getting this amount of tax per unit e1f call it e1f so amount of e1f amount of tax per unit so in, if in the market this o q1 amount of this amount of commodity is produced and sold so total tax revenue of the government will be this distance multiplied by this distance that means this area of this rectangle area of this rectangle okay so this yes, will be yes. equal to this will be equal to area 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6 okay now after tax consumer surplus is 1 producer surplus is 8 so 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6 this is the tax revenue collected by the government so now if we add all these things so the total surplus total surplus will be equal to this area
ओके एरिया कारण अमाउंटर कन्ज्यूमर सरप्लस आफ्टर टैक्स अमाउंटर टैक्स रेभिन्यू कलेक्टेड बै द गवर्नमेंट और यमाउंट प्रड्यूसर सरप्लस आफ्टर टैक्स सो बिफोर टैक्स द टोटल सरप्लस वज दिस एरिया दिस ट्राइंगल ट्राइंगल डी इ जिरो एस and after tax the total market surplus is this much so this area e0 e1 f or this triangle or amount of social welfare lost due to the imposition of uh, tax in the market is equal to this area F E zero E one are equal to four plus seven. So total loss is equal to four plus seven. So we call this dead weight loss. Okay. Okay, sir. Go ahead, do. Yes, sir. So total surplus before tax minus total surplus after tax will be equal to this area four plus seven, which is this triangle. So this is the loss in total social surplus due to imposition of tax, and we call this dead weight loss. Thus. a tax will be will reduce social welfare in a competitive market setup okay so if the government the uh, the lesson we learned from this exercise is that in case of a perfectly competitive market if a government uh, intervene with a taxation in the uh, in the market then there will be a loss in social welfare clear clear sir jodi market e perfectly competitive market e government kono tax impose kore seta society er welfare ke komiye debe kichu ta holo okay so that is the take home message now incidence of tax burden is shared between the buyers and sellers that means here this tax burden is this much total tax burden so total tax amount is this distance okay or you can say that this distance is the tax amount the same so this e1 f e1 f is the tax amount now we can see that initially before tax p0 is the price so after tax the buyers are paying p1 price so buyers tax burden tax burden of buyers is p1 minus p0 okay and what is the sellers tax burden sellers tax burden is this distance okay p0 p2 this is p2 p0 p2 so tax burden of sellers will be equal to we can say that this this distance this distance will be equal to tax minus the buyers burden okay so total tax burden theke jeta buyers tax burden seta ami minus kore dile seller er tax burden ta pabo so joto taka tax hocche seta ke ami du bhabe bhag kore dicchi dhoro tax jodi 10 taka hoy buyer dicche dhoro jak 4 taka seller dicche 
छोटकर सो टैक्स ऑफ बायर प्लस टैक्स गिवन बाय द सेलर्स विल बी इक्वल टू द टोटल टैक्स क्लियर क्लियर सर सो बायर्स टैक्स बर्डन इज p1 minus p0 एंड सेलर्स टैक्स बर्डन इज t minus p p1 minus p0 and this tax burden of the buyers and the tax burden of the seller will depend on the elasticity of demand and supply curve now if ed is the elasticity of demand and if es is elasticity of supply then the share of tax borne by the buyers will be equal to es divided by ed plus es similarly tax burden by the sellers will be equal to ed divided by ed plus es where ed is elasticity of demand curve and es is the elasticity of supply curve so as ed increases you can see the tax burden of the sellers will go up and as es increases tax burden of seller buyers will go up so tax burden of buyers will be higher if demand is relatively inelastic or ed is less tax burden of sellers will be higher if supply is relatively inelastic when es is less and there are different cases you can think of say when if ed is equal to 0 that means demand curve is perfectly inelastic then entire tax burden will be borne by the buyers and if ed is infinity that means demand curve is perfectly elastic that means horizontal straight line then entire tax burden will be borne by the sellers and if demand is inelastic then tax burden will be higher for the buyers if demand is elastic then tax burden will be higher for sellers and so on so you can think for uh, the ilas different values of elasticity of supply also now we talk about the impact of subsidy so earlier the government is imposing a, a some amount of tax on the sale per unit of sale now we think uh, what will the impact of subsidy if the government instead of imposing a tax the government is Uh, giving some incentive subsidy to the sellers then uh, how the equilibrium and how the social welfare will change that we will see Okay, now, if the government gives a subsidy, say, this is the initial supply curve. So, to produce say Q zero amount of output, the sellers need this much price. Okay. so this is the minimum price uh, if they get this amount only then the sellers will supply the amount now if the government is giving some amount of subsidy say subsidy of rupees s per unit so now the sellers need this price minus the subsidy amount because the sellers are getting this amount of subsidy from the government itself से आगे जो इफ दिस प्राइस इज से हंड्रेड रुपीज नाउ द सेलर्स उल बी उलिंग टू सेल देयर कमोडिटी इफ दे गेट्स हंड्रेड माइनस 
subsidy. Say if subsidy is equal to five, then if they get say ninety five rupees, they will sell the amount, this Q zero amount of output. Similarly, say to produce Q one amount of output, if this is say this price is say one hundred and fifty. So now after subsidy, the sellers will be happy to sell their produce if they get 150 minus this 5. That means 145. So now if we join these two lines, that means a subsidy is equivalent to a downward shift of the supply curve. Okay. Now let the government uh, gives uh, S uh, rupees S subsidy, which is uh, a negative tax per unit of output. So subsidy creates a gap between the buyer's price and the seller's price. After subsidy, supply curve shifts down by the distance S from S S to S one S one. It's like this S one. To SS to S1 S1 shifted downward. So post subsidy, the buyer's price is equal to seller's price minus the subsidy. So this is uh, the buyer's price is PD, which will be equal to uh, the seller's price minus the subsidy amount because the subsidy amount is given directly uh, by the government. So the buyer has to pay what is the seller's price minus the subsidy amount. In this example, if 100 rupees is the seller's price, price of S equal to 100 and subsidy is equal to 5 rupees, then the demanders or buyer's price will be equal to 100 minus 5. That is 95 rupees. Clear? So after yes, subsidy, sir. the new equilibrium will be at E1. So before subsidy, we have this equilibrium E0, where initial market uh, initial price is this P0, and uh, where the output produced is Q0 amount. And now after subsidy, the new equilibrium is at point E1, where uh, the market price is P1 and market output is Q1 amount. So what is happening due to a subsidy? First of all, amount of production and sale in the market is increased. Okay. Next, the price paid by the buyers fallen. Okay. And another impact is that the government as a subsidy grant, government has to bear their cost of subsidy. So subsidy to subsidy to So this subsidy will be given by the government. So government has to incur some cost to give subsidy to the producers. Now we will check uh, the consumer about the total surplus uh, before subsidy and social welfare after subsidy. And we compare between the two and we will check whether subsidy has been, uh, whether subsidy creates uh, increase in welfare or loss in welfare or no change in social welfare. So before subsidy, Consumer surplus one plus two, that means this area. So before subsidy, this is the price P0. So consumer surplus is this area. One plus two, clear. And what is producer surplus? Producer surplus is this much. 
this area. So it will be 4 plus 8. So you can see that before subsidy, consumer surplus is equal to 1 plus 2 and producer surplus is 4, 4 plus 8. So total surplus or social surplus is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. That means this area. Okay. This triangle. Okay, sir. Now after subsidy, what is consumer surplus? After subsidy, market price comes down to P1 and the new equilibrium is this E1. So after subsidy, consumer surplus is this area. So consumer surplus will be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. Consumer surplus is equal to 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. And what about the producer surplus? How much price producers are getting? Producers to produce this Q1 is the equilibrium output now. So to produce Q1 amount of output, the buyer, sellers are taking this price, this P2 price. So producers are getting this P2 price. Buyers are pay, paying this, this distance, this price, which is P1 price. And the government is giving this much amount of price or this much subsidy. So this is the PD. This distance is PD. And this distance is S subsidy. So PS will be equal to PD plus the subsidy. Okay. So this is the buyer's uh, seller's price. So this is the price line and this is the supply curve of the seller. So the producer surplus will be equal to this area. So which will be equal to 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 8. So producer surplus is 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 8. And what is the government's cost as subsidy grant? Now, this is the per unit subsidy. And this is the total amount of output produced and sold in the market. P1, E1 distance. So this area, this P2, and call it say G, P2, G, E1, P1, this is the total subsidy grant of the government. So this area is equal to 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. Okay. So it will be this of this rectangle P1, E1 and this point P2. So now after subsidy the total surplus is this consumer surplus plus producer surplus minus the government's subsidy grant because subsidy grant is the cost to the government Jodi government set up subsidy na dito set up on the kono purpose set up cost kote patto so it is a cost to the society as a whole. So the, for the society, total surplus will be sum of these three surpluses or sum of consumer surplus plus producer surplus minus the government's loss in welfare. So if we add this, it will be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 minus 7. Okay. So now total surplus before subsidy minus 
total surplus after subsidy will be equal to this is the total surplus before subsidy so 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 minus this so which will be equal to 7 so this area this area or this area 7 this area 7 is the loss in social welfare due to uh, a subsidy grant given by the government in a perfectly competitive market so this is the uh, deadweight loss deadweight loss in case of a subsidy grant so this is the deadweight loss this area 7 so thus a subsidy will reduce the social welfare in a competitive market so what we can see that uh, we have already seen uh, that uh, from the tax analysis and the subsidy analysis that any kind of government intervention Uh, be it in the form of a subsidy grant or be in the form of a imposition of tax any kind of government intervention is uh, socially not desirable if the market structure is a perfectly competitive market structure bojha gelo jodi amar market structure ta perfectly competitive market structure hoy tahole sekhane kono dhoroner government intervention সেটা ট্যাক্স ইম্পোজ করে হোক বা সাবসিডি গ্রান্ট করে হোক ইজ নট ডিজায়ারেবল বিকজ তাতে গভর্নমেন্ট ইন্টারভেনশন হলে সোসাইটির একটা ওয়েলফেয়ার লস হচ্ছে